Cinematic universes make up some of the most well-known and popular films in the entire world. However, not all of them are as successful as the MCU. In fact, many of them never even got off the ground. I'll be covering dozens of cinematic universes, from the biggest, to the most obscure, to the universes that were cancelled in production. For something to count as a cinematic universe, my criteria was that it should have at least two movies with different storylines in the same universe. For example, if they had just released Star Wars Episodes 1 through 9, I wouldn't count that as a cinematic universe. But since they also had spin-offs like Rogue One, Solo, and the Clone Wars movie, I counted in this list. Some of these will contain very minor spoilers, so I'll put warnings on the screen for when they come up. I will also be joined by fellow YouTuber Beneath the Wild for this video. Starting in 2008 with Iron Man, the Marvel Cinematic Universe covers a wide variety of comic superheroes and has had over 25 films released. Besides movies, the MCU has expanded to television shows, web series, commercials, short films, books, comics, and games. It's also been one of the most successful franchises ever, grossing over $26 billion on an estimated total budget of around $10 billion. They've also likely earned billions more on the shows and merchandise sales. The MCU is also connected to other universes, however I will get into that further down in the iceberg. Starting with 2013's Superman movie The Man of Steel, the DCEU, or DC Extended Universe, focuses on DC comic superheroes. Besides the movies, the DCEU has a television spin-off titled Peacemaker and has crossed over with the television universe known as the Arrowverse. Unlike the MCU, DC also produces TV shows and movies that exist outside of their cinematic universe. Despite grossing $5.8 billion on an estimated total budget of $3.8 billion, the universe has run into problems. Multiple big actors in the universe have left for various reasons, and parts of the universe have been given soft reboots. Despite this, DC is still planning over a dozen movies and multiple shows for the universe. Star Wars is one of the biggest film franchises ever, with nine main installments and multiple spin-offs like Solo and Rogue One. There have been thousands of shows, books, comics, video games, television movies like the infamous Christmas special, audio dramas, and theme park attractions set in the universe. The movies have been extremely financially successful, grossing over $15 billion against an estimated budget of around $3.5 billion. Starting with the 2014 film Godzilla, the MonsterVerse is a franchise based around various large creatures known as Titans like King Kong and Godzilla. Many of the monsters come from earlier Godzilla movies. Currently, a sequel to the crossover Godzilla vs. Kong and a live-action series set in the universe are both being planned. An animated spin-off titled Skull Island is also in development. There has also been discussion for years about a potential crossover with the Pacific Rim franchise, however nothing is in development yet. The MonsterVerse has also been expanded to include a few tie-in video games, books, and comics. The series has been fairly successful, grossing around $2 billion on a budget of about $1.4 billion. Starting with 2014's The Lego Movie, the Lego universe takes place in a fictional shared universe where Lego toys are alive. The first two Lego movies, The Lego Movie and The Lego Batman Movie, both made a profit and were widely praised. However, the second two, the Lego Ninjago movie and the Lego Movie 2, didn't perform as well at the box office. In 2019, Universal and Lego agreed to a five-year deal that would give them the right to distribute new Lego films. Since Warner Brothers, who made the first four Lego movies, still owns the rights to those characters, this means the universe is on hold. Besides movies, the Legoverse was expanded into a cartoon series, multiple short films, a theme park attraction ride, video games, and of course, toys. Overall, the Legoverse earned around $1.1 billion, with an estimated budget of $600 million. Starting in 2001 with The Fast and the Furious, the Fast and Furious universe is based around a family of street racers. While it didn't start out as a universe, the franchise went from stealing VCR players in the first movie to going to space in the later installments. 
Besides the main film series, they've made a spin-off movie and are planning on making more. It's also connected to the Justin Lin film Bitter Luck Tomorrow, which introduces the character of Han. Han would go on to appear in multiple Fast and Furious films. Besides the movies, the universe has an animated series, two short films, numerous video games, and theme park attractions. It's made $6.6 .6 billion with a budget of around $2.8 billion. Starting with the 2013 film The Conjuring, The Conjuring Universe is a series of horror-themed movies. The series covers some real-world stories of alleged paranormal events, like the investigations of Ed and Lorraine Warren. How real these events are is up to you, but I recommend checking out Wendigoon's video on the stories behind the films. In addition to the movies, there are also short films, comics, and discussions about a potential series set in the universe. Unlike most cinematic universes, the films don't have large budgets. This has led to them being extremely financially successful, with the movies earning over $2.1 billion on a budget of around $360 million. After the success of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, plans for more films were put into place. Paramount, the studio behind Sonic, announced plans for a spin-off TV show starring Knuckles, as well as a third Sonic movie. No spin-off movies have officially been announced yet, but since the producers stated they were making a cinematic universe, it's been rumored that a Tales movies is in production. The series has also expanded into comics and a short film. Thus far, the Sonicverse has made $633 million against a budget of $380 million. Starting in 2007 with Michael Bay's Transformers, the Transformers film series is based on Hasbro's toy line and cartoon about robots who can transform into vehicles. After the success of the first few films, Paramount Pictures decided to expand the universe, greenlighting a spin-off movie titled Transformers Universe Bumblebee, later just shortened to just Bumblebee. Due to the fifth film in the Transformers main storyline, Transformers The Last Night underperforming, the studio elected to instead build a universe around Bumblebee after that movie's success. Director and producer Michael Bay claims that the studio planned out 17 Transformer Universe films, though a couple of these were most likely cancelled when plans for a sixth mainline Transformer film were changed. Currently, an animated prequel film about the Transformers War for Cybertron and a movie about other Transformer factions titled Transformers Rise of the Beast are set to be released. While other films are still in development, strangely, a character that appears in Transformers 1 Trent Van Winkle also appears in the 2009 Friday the 13th film, being played by the same actor, though there aren't any other connections between the movies. The Transformers verse has made $4.85 billion against a budget of $2.2 billion. In 1994, Fox Studios obtained the rights to make movies based on the popular Marvel team The X-Men, which resulted in the X-Men trilogy. After the third film in the trilogy, the studio decided to focus on a series of prequels, starting with X-Men Origins Wolverine. After that movie's failure, they cancelled the X-Men Origins line of film and instead focused on a prequel series with X-Men First Class. From there they expanded the universe, having crossovers with actors from the original X-Men trilogy and spin-offs set in the universe like Deadpool, New Mutants, and The Wolverine. The series also expanded with TV shows like Legion. In 2019, Disney bought Fox Studios, which resulted in the cancellation of the universe. Some movies that we know were cancelled are Gambit, X-Force, Alpha Flight, and Kitty Pride. However, Disney has stated that there are plans to reuse the X-Men characters and make a sequel to Deadpool. A few actors even appeared in their X-Men universe roles in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Fox X-Men movies grossed $6 billion against a budget of $3.5 billion. The Sonyverse refers to a series of movie production company Sony is making around Spider-Man characters. Starting with Venom in 2018, the Sonyverse is planning on releasing films centering around Madden Web, The Sinister Six, and Kraven the Hunter, and others. They are also planning on producing a television series set in the universe, potentially around the character of Silk or Silver Saber and Black Cat. 
It was revealed in Venom 2 that the Sonyverse takes place in the same multiverse as the MCU when Venom watches a scene from Spider-Man Far From Home, which was later confirmed in Morbius. According to Sony producer Amy Pascal, sorry if I got your name wrong, Spider-Verse also exists in this multiverse, as does the other two Spider-Man film series. It's not Sony's first attempt at a cinematic universe, but we are getting to that further down the iceberg. The Sonyverse has earned $1.5 billion off of a budget of $600 million. Starting with Pixar's 2006 film Cars, the Cars series follows sentient race car Lightning McQueen and other vehicles in a world where vehicles are intelligent life forms on the planet. The universe consists of the main Cars film series, the plane spin-off movies, and multiple animated series, video games, and shorts. Originally, the universe was going to have spin-off movies based on spaceships, trains, and boats, but the Disney studio that was going to produce them, Disney Toons, unfortunately closed down. So those plans are now shelved. The movies have made over $1.7 billion on a budget of about $1.2 billion. But the Cars movies are extremely lucrative in branding, with over $19 billion in merchandise sales. Considered to be the first cinematic universe, the Universal Classic Monsters are a series of films that started with 1931's Dracula and ended with 1956's The Creature Walks Among Us. The movies feature many popular monsters, including Dracula, the Wolfman, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein's Monster, and the Bride of Frankenstein. It also featured adaptions of popular authors like H.G. Wells' The Invisible Man, Gaston LaRue's The Phantom of the Opera, and Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. While most of the films said to be in the universe aren't really connected, there are notable crossovers. The first crossover was 1943's Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, which featured the two monsters fighting. This was followed by the Abbott and Costello series, where the comedic duo met with the Dracula, the Mummy, Frankenstein's Monster, the Wolfman, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the Invisible Man, and later the Creature from the Black Lagoon on a television special. I can't find a source on how much the universe made as a whole, but judging by the amount of movies they made and the box office returns I did find, the film series was very successful. Known as the Showa era of Godzilla films, named after the Japanese Emperor Showa, the original Godzilla movies spanned from 1954's Godzilla to 1975's Terror of Mechagodzilla. They featured movies based around multiple large monsters known as Kaiju. The series also featured one of the first international crossover movies in 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla. There were also plans to create a crossover movie in 1966 titled Batman vs. Godzilla. It would have featured Adam West's Batman facing off against Godzilla, but it was cancelled. After the final film Terror of Mechagodzilla didn't perform as well as the other movies, the series was shelved until it was rebooted in 1984. Adjusted for inflation, these movies made an estimated $2.9 billion. A crossover between the Alien and Predator franchises, the Alien vs. Predator universe originally began in a 1989 comic book series before being adapted into two movies in 2004 and 2007. Several Alien vs. Predator video games were also created. The movies were mildly financially successful, earning about $310 million on a budget of around $210 million. However, despite some attempts, a third movie hasn't been made yet. One of the plans for Alien vs. Predator 3 was to have it lead directly into the original Alien movie. Since the studio behind the franchise was bought by Disney, plans to continue the franchise may be cancelled. There are also hints that the Terminator movies exist in the same universe. Director James Cameron originally wanted to include a company from the Terminator series in his movie Aliens, but he changed it. Connections are also hinted at in other media set in the universe, like the 1994 Alien vs. Predator video game. A crossover between The Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th series, the Freddy vs. Jason verse consists of the 2003 movie Freddy vs. Jason. Although the movie was a moderate success, earning $116 million on a budget of $60 million, a planned sequel film that would have had the two characters face off against Ash Williams of the Evil Dead series, unfortunately, never materialized. Bruce Campbell, 
who plays Ash, said that the studio refused to let Ash kill Freddy or Jason, so he passed on the project. Instead, the story was turned into a 2007 and 2009 comic book. Freddy vs. Jason was also the last movie in the original Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th franchises before they was rebooted. Ghostbusters is a franchise based around the exploits of the Ghostbusters, a group of ghost hunters who use technology to stop ghosts. After the first two films, the franchise was in development hell for many years until the 2016 reboot film Ghostbusters. Due to that film's financial failure, they instead opted to make a sort of sequel to the original franchise titled Ghostbusters Afterlife. Around the time the reboot movie was being made, the studio had plans for more movies set in the universe, one with Channing Tatum and Chris Pratt, directed by the Russo brothers. However, this has been delayed since 2015, although recently Phil Lord and Chris Miller revealed that they were working on the project. And an animated film and series set in the universe are also being worked on, as well as the Ghostbusters 4, a sequel to Afterlife. Following the successful launch of the MCU and DCEU, Universal decided to reboot their classical monster movie universe. In late 2013, the studio decided to reshoot parts of the movie Dracula Untold to be a sort of soft launch to the cinematic universe. Likely due to Dracula Untold only being a mild financial success, these plans were cancelled, and the actual first film of the universe was changed to 2017's The Mummy. The Mummy didn't do as well as they thought it would in theaters, leading to the planned second movie in the universe, The Bride of Frankenstein, being postponed indefinitely. Eventually, the universe was cancelled, with Universal instead deciding to focus on standalone films like The Invisible Man and the upcoming comedy film Renfield, based on Dracula's henchmen. The Mummy made $410 million on a budget of around $390 million. The View Askew Universe is a very loosely connected series of films created by Kevin Smith. They include movies like Clerks, Mallrats, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, and Dogma. The universe also has minor references in non-Kevin Smith movies like Scream 3. The films are mostly connected through the characters of Jay and Silent Bob, played by Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith, and don't have an overarching story. The franchise has branched out into comic books, a video game, television, short films, and even a planned VR series. The series has made a total of $127 million against an estimated budget of $93 million. Due to Ben Affleck leaving the DC Extended Universe, his planned solo Batman film was changed to star a new actor. In 2019, Robert Pattinson was cast for the Batman movie, set in a new universe. The movie premiered in 2022 and was a success, grossing $770 million against a budget of $400 million. Due to the film's success, a sequel was announced, and even before the movie released, multiple TV spin-offs were in development. These were a now-canceled series about the Gotham City Police, a limited series about the Penguin, and a series about Arkham Asylum. Despite some sources stating that Batman is intended to have its own shared universe, no spin-off movies have been announced yet. After Sony's 2012 reboot of Spider-Man with The Amazing Spider-Man, they wanted to try their hand at a cinematic universe of their own. According to documents leaked by the infamous Sony hack, they planned on doing this by having multiple spin-off movies based on Spider-Man villains. These were confirmed to be a Venom movie, potentially with Channing Tatum as Venom. Apparently Tatum was studying fan websites and chat rooms to get a pulse on what fans wanted from a Venom movie. A Sinister Six spin-off movie, with the director wanting Tom Hardy as Sandman. Additionally, Spider-Man was going to appear, potentially as a member since they were supposedly going to be an anti-hero team. At least two more Amazing Spider-Man movies, a Black Cat spin-off movie, Gwen Stacy would have been resurrected for the main villain in the role of Carnage, similar to a resurrection in the Ultimate Spider-Man comic book. A potential Silver Sable film, a potential crossover with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, potentially more Raimi Spider-Man films, and a movie titled, I'm not kidding, Spider-Man vs. The Amazing Spider-Man. Additionally, we know that more films were proposed but never made it far in production, like a Spider-Man 2099 film, 
A mid-quill set between Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, where Kraven the Hunter would have been hired by the Green Goblin to track down Spider-Man, and a Clone Saga plotline for Amazing Spider-Man 3 and 4. Unfortunately, a lot of these projects' authenticity is unconfirmed. It's very likely that some of the films that were planned for the universe, like Venom and the Silver Sable and Black Hat films, were or are being worked into the Sony-verse. Brendan Fraser's Mummy film was a critical and commercial hit, and was followed by two sequels. The movie also had five Scorpion King spin-off movies, Dwayne Johnson was replaced after the first, and an animated TV show. There were plans for more films to be made in the universe, but due to problems with The Mummy 3, they were cancelled in favor of the Dark Universe reboot. After that universe's failure, it was reported that Universal was considering bringing back Fraser for another Mummy film. There are also plans to reboot the Scorpion King series with Dwayne Johnson as a producer. Both Men in Black and the 21 Jump Street films were successful franchises, which led Sony to consider a crossover between the two, titled MIB-23. According to actor Jonah Hill, due to issues with getting the two series to mesh, the crossover was shelved indefinitely. Additional films set in the universe, like in Men in Black 4 with Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones were planned, but this was also cancelled. Instead, the studio made the soft reboot movie Men in Black International. Despite the setbacks, the movie isn't officially cancelled. According to 21 Jump Street director Phil Lord, Sony is planning on the third Jump Street film to be titled 24 Jump Street, based on some of the joke sequels seen at the end of 22 Jump Street. He also said that they're saving the MIB 23 movie to be released after 24 Jump Street. A spin-off of 21 Jump Street starring Tiffany Haddish and Zendaya is also being developed. The Ring and June are two of Japan's most popular horror franchises, which led them to crossing over in 2016's Sadako vs. Keiko. The crossover was first announced as an April Fool's joke, before being actually confirmed later that year. The crossover grossed about $8 million against an unknown budget. There don't appear to be any further plans with this franchise. Spy Kids Tarantino verse in a promotion for Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez movies Grindhouse, a fake trailer for a movie titled Machete with Danny Trejo was created. Afterwards, two films Machete and Machete Kills, both starring Trejo, were released. Machete is also the name of Danny Trejo's character in the Spy Kids film leading to some speculation that the movies took place in the same universe. Trejo confirmed when he said that the Machete films are, quote-unquote, what Uncle Machete does when he's not taking care of the kids. However, Ryu has denied this. There are also connections to other Tarantino and Ryu as films. For example, a character in Machete also appears in Kill Bill. Tarantino's films are also theorized to take place in two shared universes. One is the main universe, the real world. The other is the movie universe. This universe is presented as a set of movies within Tarantino's main universe, basically films that Tarantino's characters would go see if they went to the theater. Based around the popular Japanese franchises of Godzilla, Ultraman, Kamen Rider, and Neon Genesis Evangelion, the Shin Japan Heroes universe is a planned shared universe. Announced in early 2022, the plan is for these Shin films, like Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, Rebuild of Evangelion, and Shin Kamen Rider to all take place in the same universe. Due to how new the cinematic universe is, it's unknown as to what degree the movies will cross over. In 2020, Hanna-Barbera released Scoob, an animated film based on their extremely popular Scooby-Doo characters. In the movie, they established that the Scooby-Doo characters exist in the same world as other Hanna-Barbera characters, like Captain Caveman and Blue Falcon. The movie is intended to be the first in a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. So far, a prequel spin-off film and a sequel have been greenlit. In 2022, despite the prequel being mostly complete, the studio decided to cancel the film instead, likely for a tax write-off. We don't have exact sales numbers due to the film being released digitally with a partial theater release, but it's estimated to have grossed hundreds of millions of dollars against a budget of around 90 million dollars. In 2015, Valiant Comics announced that they were partnering with Sony to create a cinematic universe with their characters. 
This was planned to be a Harbinger movie based around a team of superhumans and a Bloodshot movie based around the nanite powered superhero Bloodshot. The plan was for both of them to have an origin movie and a sequel before they crossed over for a movie titled Harbinger Wars. Solo superhero movies based on duo Archer and Armstrong, Shadow Man, and Faith Herbert were also announced. Although it was supposed to be the second film released after Harbinger, Bloodshot ended up being the first film in the universe, being released in 2020. Due to theaters being closed in early 2020, it ended up being pulled from theaters early. This resulted in the movie making only $37 million against a budget of $90 million, though it might have made more through DVD and digital sales. Despite the movie losing money, a sequel was greenlit. However, in 2019, the rights to most of the Valiant universe was acquired from Sony by Paramount, with the exception of Bloodshot. This means a crossover movie between Bloodshot and other Valiant characters would require a deal similar to Sony and Disney's Spider-Man deal. John Wick is an action thriller series starring Keanu Reeves as an assassin coming out of retirement. Due to the wide success of the movies, a number of spin-offs and potential crossovers are being produced or discussed. One spin-off movie starring Ana de Armas as well as a prequel TV series are in production. There has also been discussion of crossovers with the movies Atomic Blonde and Nobody. Both of the movies share many of the same crew, although there hasn't been anything confirmed yet. Full Moon Features is a film studio known for their lower budget horror movies like Puppet Master. Since the company began in 1988, their franchises have crossed over with each other at certain points. This culminated in a six part comic book series titled Dollman Kills the Full Moon Universe. In it, the character Dollman kills multiple villains from across the franchise. The Full Moon Universe is more like the classical Universal Monsters universe, where only some of the films cross over with each other. In the late 90s and early 2000s, Blade was a popular trilogy of movies and a TV spin-off centered on the Marvel half-vampire and vampire hunter Blade. While the franchise ended after the TV spin-off was cancelled, there were plans for it to continue. Originally, a prequel trilogy with Deacon Frost, the villain from the first movie, was planned, but this was later cancelled. There were talks to have Wesley Snipes join the MCU as Blade, but these fell through in favor of a reboot for the character. Executives discussed adding Blade to the Underworld Universe, a series of films about vampires and werewolves. Not only that, but the Underworld Universe would have crossed over with even more films. There was originally a planned crossover cameo with the 2014 movie I Frankenstein, but this was cut. There was also discussion of a crossover with the Resident Evil film series that ran from 2002 to 2016, but this was also cancelled. The 2017 film King Arthur Legend of the Sword was originally intended to be the first film in a cinematic universe based around Arthurian characters. The universe was to start with solo films with other characters from the same legends, before they would all team up in a Knights of the Round Table crossover. Originally, the first film was called Knights of the Round Table King Arthur, which presumably meant that the later films in the series would be titled the same way. It's been reported that the final film was actually a combination of some of the scripts and elements that were going to be used in other movies set in the world. Unfortunately for the universe, King Arthur Legend of the Sword bombed at the box office, and any potential sequels were cancelled. Power Rangers is a long-running and constantly rebooted TV show. The franchise's success eventually led to Lionsgate Studio trying to make a cinematic universe out of the series. Up to seven movies were planned out, and characters from previous Power Rangers shows like the Green Ranger would have returned. However, the first film in the planned series didn't do so well at the box office, taking in about $145 million on a $200 million budget. This led to the universe being scrapped, and the rights to Power Rangers being sold to Hasbro. Hasbro is reportedly working on a time-traveling reboot to the universe. In 2014, Sony was considering making a cinematic universe surrounding Robin Hood and his supporting characters, Little John, Free Eye Tuck, and Will Scarlet. Each of them would have had their own film along with crossover movies later on. Before the movies were even made, the universe was cancelled, 
It was rumored that the script for the 2018 Robin Hood movie was almost going to be used for Sony's Robin Hood film, but that is unconfirmed. Stephen King's The Dark Tower is a series about the traveling gunslinger, which was adapted into a movie in 2017. The film series was planned to be a cinematic universe of both TV and movies. Plans for his series were cancelled after the movie didn't do well. However, the real cinematic universe comes from how the books were written. The Dark Tower book series has connections to multiple Stephen King books due to the series taking place in a multiverse. Many of these books were also adapted into movies and even referenced in the film. It, The Shining, Salem's Lot, The Mist, Pet Cemetery, and more. That doesn't mean that it's from the 2017 movie would have shown up in the future Dark Tower movies if their work canceled, but they do take place in the same universe. There were reports of a reboot TV show being worked on, but it seems like those plans are also canceled. A darker take on the story of Superman, Brightburn was a 2019 horror superhero movie. In an interview before the film's premiere, director David Yaroveski said that if the movie was successful, the universe would be expanded. In the movie's post credit scene, various dark parodies of superheroes were shown, as well as Rain Wilson's character the Crimson Bolt from the 2010 movie Super, confirming them to be in the same universe. The movie was mildly successful, making $33 million on a budget of around $24 million. This led to a sequel being discussed, though no news has been reported on it since 2019. Sinister and Insidious were two of the most popular and successful horror film series of the 2010s. In a 2018 interview, Jason Blum, who worked on both of the franchises, stated that he wanted the two worlds to cross over at some point. Since then, however, there have been no reports about the potential universe. Sony originally had plans to expand Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. This started with a Spider-Man cartoon spin-off on MTV, though this was later cancelled and decanonized. After Spider-Man 3's financial success, the studio was considering at least one sequel, with even a Spider-Man 6 being discussed as happening some point in the future, along with a spin-off film. Like with every Sony attempt at a cinematic universe, they wanted to lead off with a spin-off based on Venom. Interestingly, one of the ideas for the movie was to have Stan Lee play an actual role, more than just a simple cameo. Ultimately, Raimi declined to return for Spider-Man 4, and the series was cancelled, along with the Venom movie and any other potential spin-offs in the universe. Spider-Man and a few villains from the universe later returned for Spider-Man No Way Home. Call of Duty is one of the most popular and profitable video game franchises of all time, which studio exclusives wanted to capitalize on. In 2015, Activision, the company behind Call of Duty, announced plans for a quote-unquote robust cinematic universe and possible television adaptions based off the Call of Duty games. All we know about the universe was that Italian director Stefano Salima and Black Panther writer Joe Robert Cole were involved in the plan first and second film respectively. In 2020, however, it was announced that Activision were no longer working on the movies. Back in 2010, Fox had plans for a crossover film with all the Marvel characters they owned at the time, like the X-Men, Deadpool, Daredevil, and the Fantastic Four. The movie would have adapted the Superhero Registration Act from the Civil War comic book storyline. Instead of Nitro in the comics and Scarlet Witch in the 2016 Civil War movie, the Human Torch would have been the catalyst. During a battle with Molecule Man, he would have gone supernova and caused major damage. The film went through multiple scripts. One version would have led to the two sides reconciling for a sequel, and a post credit scene featuring the Skrulls. It's unknown if they would have used the same actors from the Fantastic Four and X-Men movies or new ones. Ultimately, the movie never got far into production, and was eventually cancelled. In 2017, multiple filmmakers including Edgar Wright, Dwayne Johnson, Ryan Johnson, Mark Webb, and Lin-Manuel Miranda joked about a cinematic universe with the titles of songs by Simon and Garfunkel. The first movies in the universe would be 2017's Baby Driver and The Only Living Boy in New York. 
Another movie discussed was a Dwayne The Rock Johnson adaption of the song I Am A Rock. It appears that the universe hasn't been developed further. We already talked about Transformers early on Iceberg, but there were plans to make that universe much larger. In 2015, Hasbro, the toy company behind Transformers, announced plans for a massive crossover universe between some of their toy lines. These universes were Mask with G.I. Joe, Micronuts, Visionaries, Knights of the Magical Light, and Rom. Plans for a crossover between G.I. Joe and Transformers had been in the works for a few years, but this greatly expanded the universe. There were also reports that the Gem and the Holograms the movies would cross over into this universe. Paramount, the studio who was set to make the universe, hired a bunch of writers including Joe Robert Cole to plan it out. However, just six years later, it was announced by the producer of the 2021 Snake's Eye film that the universe was unfortunately cancelled. However, there might still be a shared universe between G.I. Joe and Transformers. It's been reported that despite some pushback from Paramount Studios, there are still some filmmakers who would like to do a crossover between the two series. In fact, an early script for G.I. Joe 3 would have featured the Transformers being introduced, but Paramount decided not to allow this. After Snake's Eye's failure at the box office and the Transformers soft reboot, it remains to be seen if the series will ever cross over on the big screen. American International Pictures was a studio known for low-budget movies targeting teenaged audiences. The studio ended up being absorbed by Filmways Incorporated in the 1980s. Decades later, it was announced that the studio would be coming back. In 2013, the son of co-founder Samuel Arkoff announced that they would be remaking some of their old films in a shared universe. Some of the movies mentioned were Girls in Prison, Viking Women and the Sea Serpent, The Brain Eaters, she Creature, War of the Colossal Beast, Teenage Caveman, Runaway Daughters, The Undead, Cool and the Crazy, and Day the World Ended. The universe would have featured recurring monsters and anti-heroes, and the films were planned to be shot back to back. Eventually, for reasons unclear, plans for the universe were cancelled. American International Pictures would later come back under MGM Studios in 2020, but they haven't made any cinematic universes yet. In 2007, Warner Brothers announced plans for a movie titled Justice League Mortal. Directed by George Miller, it was intended to be the first film in a planned series of DC movies, with both spin-offs and sequels. The studio planned to cast mostly young actors and have them grow into their roles over time. The movie would have been based on the comics Justice League Tower of Babel and Superman Sacrifice. It would have featured Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Kid Flash, who would have become Flash at the end of the movie, Martian Manhunter, Aquaman, and Jon Stewart's Green Lantern. Due to issues with the Writers Guild of America's strike that was ongoing at the time, the film ended up being delayed. Eventually, Justice League Mortal was cancelled in favor of releasing separate movies building into a crossover. A vice president at DC stated, We're going to make a Justice League movie, whether it's now or 10 years from now. But we're not going to do it, and Warner's is not going to do it, until we know it's right. While the 2011 Green Lantern movie attempted and failed to set up the universe, eventually DC began one with Man of Steel. The Tommy Westfall Hypothesis is a theory by the legendary Dwayne McDuffie of cartoon and comic book fame. In the show Saint Elsewhere, it's revealed that Tommy Westfall, an autistic kid, has been secretly dreaming the entirety of the show. Since Saint Elsewhere crossed over with many other shows during its run, it could also mean that those shows took place in his head as well. In fact, in 2003, a writer for Saint Elsewhere said, Someone did the math once, and something like 90% of all American television took place in Tommy Westfall's mind. God love him. Now you may be thinking that it's a TV universe and not a cinematic one, but the universe also expands into movies. The Tommy Westfall wiki lists hundreds of movies of varying degrees of connection to the universe, like the X-Files movies, the Star Trek franchise, and even Die Hard. McDuffie himself doesn't actually believe in the universe. He only pointed it out as a way to demonstrate how just because two shows have a crossover or shared character doesn't mean they necessarily share the same continuity. If we take every small crossover to mean that all these shows and movies exist in the same continuity, then they were all just a dream. 
Thank you for watching. Leave a comment below on what your favorite cinematic universe is, or which cancelled universe you would have liked to see the most. If you know someone who would like this video, I'd appreciate it if you shared it with them or spread it around online. I'd also appreciate you liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and following my social media accounts linked in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, my Patreon will also be linked below. A lot of effort and hours went into this video, so I really appreciate any help. If you want to see more cancelled media, check out this video I did about animated crossovers that were cancelled, also with Beneath the Wild. A link to his channel will be in the description. The numbers I used for the total box offices and the budgets are sometimes just an estimate. Most studios only release the production budget of a movie, which is how much they spent on hiring actors, equipment, special effects, and other things. Usually studios will spend at least the production budget on marketing as well, meaning that the total budget is twice the size of the budget that they actually list, so I just estimated the budget by doubling it. Also, for some of the older movies, I did use an inflation calculator, so those numbers are also just an estimate. Finally, some movies were affected by the theater closures in the early 2020s, so while they may have made less in the theaters, they probably made more through online sales than movies usually would. Once again, I'd like to thank Beneath the Wild for joining me. I'd also like to thank Patrick Soucy, who has a great graph about the various connections in the Tarantinoverse. I'll leave a link to that below. I'd also like to give a special thank you to Our Dark, Master Tyrannosaurus, Equarep, Raven Days, and Chris. That's all for this video, and I will see you in the next one.